They've won Tonys and Oscars and Emmys and Grammys. There's no red carpet because they're home in their jammies. From Melrose Place to Broadway to Janeway and her crew. Let Seth and James bring all the stars to you. Anywho. They're entertaining everyone, so who's gonna grouse? Just sit right back and you'll hear some tales on Star. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Stars in the House. I'm James Wesley. Seth is around the corner in the kitchen getting some last minute pictures for one of our many ladies from Jerome Robbins Broadway. Um, this, as you probably know, is our daily live stream for the Actors Fund. We love the Actors Fund. They're basically the people to go to if you're in the performing arts and you've lost your job, if you need help paying your rent paying that health insurance premium, paying medical bills, paying for food, paying for utilities. The Actors Fund is there. If you are, hold on, I'm going to put on our little scroll on the bottom. If you are so fortunate to um, be in a position that you can give, um, we would love that. Hold on for a second. I don't know if it's here. Scrolling. I'm going to end up putting on an old one. There we go. Thank you, David. Um, donate at starsinthehouse.com or text fund 2020 to 56512, and you will get a receipt from the Actors Fund. Forward that receipt to donations at starsinthehouse.com. We are happy. Hi, Seth. Hi, elections matter. That's, oh, wow. I don't even know you had that shirt. Just got it. Oh, well, that's why. Um, we are up to, hold on, I got to put on my glasses. We began in March. We just hit around 210 episodes, and we are up to? $520,240 raised for the Actors Fund. Yes. Um, okay, ladies, look what Seth is doing. Now, this all in looks familiar. In honor of the dance, this is what he's literally waiting till the last minute here to do. It's I an ice pack for his arm. I have tennis elbow. And so of I course a, I, this is I'm putting it on right now. I got it. You know what I figured out, ladies? You'll understand if you if you have dancer issues like I do without the actual talent. Um, <laughs> nonstop Peloton, and I think I'm flexing my arms on the Peloton, and it gave me tennis elbow. Oh my god! Is it? Marianne Lamb is nodding. Yeah. and understanding. It's really bad. It's been like four, probably like two months. Tennis elbow. I'm getting acupuncture. Not helping. Anywho, okay, let's keep going. Okay, there's so much to talk about here before we bring. You talked about them forwarding on. your seat. Yes, I did. So forward the receipt to donations at starsinthehouse.com. Not the old Stars in the House address. Donations at starsinthehouse.com. Forward it. Then we'll have one of these nice ladies read it while literally holding their leg up like Cheetah in that old Needix ad. Anybody remember Cheetah? When she, there's Joanne doing it. Hold, Hold on, on. Here we go. On. One, Joanne, two, three. Joanne Hunter. That's right. She's still leg. got it, Joanne Hunter. <laughs> She has good games with terrible Wi Fi. Uh, Mary, and Marianne Lamb just had to do it to prove it. <laughs> Debbie Gravitz, like, I'll belt. I'll oh my belt. gosh, look at these women. Oh She's on Fletcher. You get it. You're all in great shape. God. It doesn't matter that it was 30 years ago. Still got it. That's right. Um, okay, a lot of things to talk about because, as we know, there was a debate last night and we have an, an election that has already begun in many states. In fact, early voting, thank you, artsactionfund.org slash arts book. Can you put that up, Seth? Yes. There you go. Um, it is a great resource if you go to go to. to. Site, That's right. Artsactionfund.org slash arts vote. It will tell you wherever the hell you live, when you could do early voting, when voting ends, how you get your form. That's right. Early voting has already started in Delaware, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Pennsylvania, South Dakota, Vermont, Virginia, Illinois, Michigan, Wyoming. As Annette Benning told us last week, early voting, I mean, voting, the election ends on november 3rd but it has already started it is here it is happening our dog is so distracting me right now is she hungry what the hell is no, going on she just bored. She's at the top of the stairs just so, oh, i thought barking. you were literally talking to julie at the top of the stairs you were motioning to mandy to no, come down mandy. she's going oh ay, ay, ay. anywho speaking of young people that are um that are actually not annoying because our dog is annoying oh my god look who just logged on wow it's working faith um hey let's go to poll hero and let's talk about poll hero all is. right one two three margo hi margo hi. Thank you for having me. Of course, we're gonna put your website up here, pollhero.org. You guys are so fresh faced. If people don't know, um, so poll, a lot of people that work the polls are older and they're nervous about getting COVID. So they're basically all not showing up this year. So there are thousands of slots to fill. So Poll Hero Project was like, let's get some people that are not scared of getting sick, a lot of young people. And they've started this thing. You go to pollhero.org to sign up to work. Now I know you began maybe eight weeks ago. What are you up to now in terms of volunteers? So we're trying to hit now 30,000 signups. Wow. Um, so it's been growing ever since we started. 
And so tell everyone what Poll Hero is. Mm -hmm. So we are a grassroots organization of young people and we're essentially recruiting other young people um, to sign up to be poll workers. Now the thing about Poll Hero is that when you sign up with us, you just put basic information like your name, where you live, things like that. And then we'll send you a text message giving you all of the information that you need for example, what you need to fill out for your specific county. So we really just make the process super easy and simple um, to become a poll worker. Margo, um, well, Seth's saying as he's feeding our dog, um, is, it, is it a job? Do you get paid? You get paid. And that's one of the great things about it is it's not a whole day that it's like, oh, I didn't get anything from it. You know, you meet new people, but for a lot of people, you get paid. Have some of the young people who have signed up, have they already done the um, training? So that's supposed to be going on right now. So some people mm -hmm. have already done the training. Some people are still waiting to hear from their election officials. The thing is that it just it varies by county. So it really just depends on where you live. Got it. Anything else before um, before we bring on the, uh, the ladies? What, Seth? Oh, <laughs> I love how Seth's doing the interview from the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Seth said from the kitchen, do you have to be 18 or older? You do not. In some counties, you can be 16 and 17 years old. All right. All right. And, and they're amazing prizes. We know because we've, uh, we, we asked some of our friends when begging and there's some amazing prizes. What's the deal with the incentive program? So it's really just a way to kind of keep you on track until the election. So we have a checklist and it's things like sign up to be a poll worker, put the checklist on your refrigerator tell people you know, and when you check those off, you can be entered to win some of our really amazing prizes. You can go to pollhero.org slash journey to um, learn more about it. All right, um, including, by the way, Yardley Smith is donating not only um, a script, a signed script from The Simpsons, but she's also doing um, a Zoom call with a Yardley, lucky person. Yardley Smith is Lisa Simpson, for those of us that aren't obsessed with <laughs> So we have Lisa Simpson, we have Philippa Sue, from Hamilton doing a Zoom call. We have Josh Gad, who's Olaf and Frozen. We have a lot of amazing uh, yeah. offers for everyone that does it. Go to Poll Hero. All right, Margo, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. PollHero.org. And guys, if you can't do it, someone you know is young Absolutely. and helping can do it. So please post that link, PollHero.org. We need everyone who wants to vote to be able to vote. Because um, some people just want to, like Brenda Braxton, she's like, I want to vote in person. Yeah. So yes. um, before we bring on the women, um, I want to say that 20, the census was originally, of course, supposed to be done in April, um, and then it was extended to the end of October, and then a certain president said, no, I want it to be at the end of September, and then it's been taken to court, and now apparently it's October 6th. The point is, who knows when in the hell it's going to officially end. So just do it. But just, so just do it. And if you haven't, and if you have done it, great. 2020census.gov, but make sure your friends and family have. You'd be amazed how many people I've spoken to, texted, emailed, and found out that they asked a friend or a family member and they had not done it. I never knew what the point was, but if you fill out the census, it literally tells the government where to put money, like hospitals, what schools, how many representatives you get. It's so important. If you And if you don't fill it out, then they think you don't exist, so you get less funding in your community. So that, tell everybody you know, 2020census.gov. Um, I do want to say that we, we've we got a great week. In addition to the women from Jerome Robbins Broadway, tomorrow, who do we have, Seth? That's right. It's it's Len Carey's birthday today, and tomorrow we're going to celebrate with some of his, him and some of his uh, fellow cast members, because right now... From Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Todd, thank you. I just figured everyone knew what Maybe you were think playing. It's a, a Doll's Life. Anybody? Doll. Okay. That's an early 80s reference. Okay. Um, but there's today be and until Sunday, it's... Let me make sure I got this right. An evening of Shakespeare and song with Len Carreau, Um Broadway and the Bard. Show. Yeah, Broadway and the Bard. And it's to go... It's his show, and it's going... All the money's raised is going to the Actors Fund. What is it? What do you mean it is? I'm sorry. If you if you, you can buy, basically, I guess, the live stream for four days. Um, for me, I don't know what the donation is. Go to ActorsFund.org. The point is he filmed the show, Broadway and the Bard, which is the big hit. Thank and you. And now it's going to be online for just a couple of days. And Beginning if you buy today. It, yeah, the money is going to um, the actors fund. And if you saw Lynn when he just sang "Sin in the Clowns," oh my gosh, you know he's like one of the most brilliant actors in the world. Absolutely, if you look at Broadway and The Bard. And tomorrow night he'll be on with the cast of Sweeney Todd. And then on Friday, it's a day early, but we're still going to celebrate it. We're celebrating Mean Girls Day on Friday, so we have lots of stars of the film here on Friday night. And Saturday, the cast of Frasier is coming back by popular demand. So yes, Queens, we've got a busy right, week. So we're going to bring on the Jerome Robbins ladies. They've already yes. warned me, "quote unquote." We like to talk. 
So, ladies, oh. here, yeah, <laughs> I know what's coming up. Here's what we're gonna do. Here's what <laughs> they're all laughing knowingly. Yeah. Here's what we had to do. We just discovered this. Um, what show was that? Well, this was about? after Hercules. God bless the women of Hercules, the muses. But basically, there was nothing usable for Sirius XM Radio <laughs> because everyone talked at the same time, so all their mics went out. So it was just literally the sound of feedback. So the point is, what we've done is now we bring everybody on. We say hello. Then you mute the hell out of yourself. So you push mute. We and, won't do it. You'll be in charge. And then when you're going to answer, you unmute yourself. But you, as someone else is talking, can't go like, I know, girl, that's true. Because if you're saying, I know, girl, that's true, it's actually cutting out the voice of the other person. So girls, right. shut the H up. Okay, so please, <laughs> you're dancers. You're used to being silent. This is perfect. Oh, my gosh. Suzanne's angry. Suzanne Fletcher. Always has to be anti. Okay, so please <laughs> welcome all the amazing ladies of Jerome Robbins. First, the person with the most scary Wi-Fi that I'm terrified about. Let's see how you're this gonna works. bring her on first. Well, because we'll, we're gonna start with the bad Wi-Fi, then go upwards. Please okay. welcome. She's off like she's in an island off California. The wonderful Miss Faith <laughs> Prince. Hi. Hi, Faith. Got to have a gimmick if you wanna get ahead. <laughs> you sound great. You look great. Your sink is completely off, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> So we'll see how long you last. You look amazing. Okay, then welcome. Uh, she actually won a Tony Award for her brilliant performance. Beltris, Miss Debbie Gravit. Oh! Hi, Debbie. Hi, guys. Debbie, you look great. For those who don't know, Debbie won a uh, Tony when she was Debbie Shapiro, but now she's Miss oh Debbie Gravit. Yes, but now everybody still calls me Debbie Shapiro. Right, <laughs> Seth? I do because I grew up with you as Debbie Shapiro. I can't change my my perception of you. Okay, and now, please welcome, welcome the lady. Please, uh -oh. she's a she's a, a she's a coast to coast choreographer, including across the sea. But she still got it, as she demonstrated with the high leg. Please welcome Ms. Joanne Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, ladies. How fun is this? Okay, then. Oh my god. Welcome our Southern Belle of the evening, Ms. Suzanne Fletcher. Woo! Hi, y'all. Hi. <laughs> happy birthday, Debbie. All right. Happy <gasps> birthday, Debbie. It was yesterday, I, yes. <laughs> I posted. And then please <laughs> welcome. She's such a hilarious character actress, but a brilliant a brilliant dancer at the same time, Ms. Marianne Lamb. Hi. Hi, hi Marianne. Hi, hi Marianne. Woo! You look adorable. Oh, thank you. And finally, someone that's been on Stars in the House many times because she started a million Broadway shows that we have reunions of, including Carrie. We'll talk about that privately. Please welcome Miss Charlotte Tempoise. Oh, there she is. Oh, yeah. She's already drinking. Serious XM listener, she's already drinking. Okay, now. <laughs> okay, so time to start muting. So first we're going to start with, does anybody want to talk about the audition process? Does anyone have a specific audition process story that we should hear about? I'm sure you all do, but who wants to talk about it? I know Faith will want to go first. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Faith, you go first. Like I said, you look fine, you sound fine, but it doesn't match with your speaking voice, but it's still fine. Hit it. Yeah. Oh, this too bad. I'll to talk anyway. <laughs> Um, go Debbie. All right. Well, I'll just, I'll just, I'll dive in for a second. So, I mean, I think we all had very similar audition experiences, although maybe I didn't because I wasn't dancer dancer. Um, but I first auditioned in Los Angeles for Jerry Mitchell and I, assisting, right. Sorry. Just to get the reference, he was assisting Jerome Robbins, Cynthia and Ruby and Jerry were both assisting. Correct. There were like 5,000 assistants. <laughs> so I auditioned for Jerry Mitchell in Los Angeles at Hollywood Presbyterian, where everybody used to audition and rehearse for things. And I had to learn, I think, four songs, including Mr. Monotony. John McDaniel played for me. He was a just a little putschke little pianist at the time. <laughs> he played for me. And Basically, to make a really long story short, then I came to New York. They flew me to New York. I auditioned four times. I had to learn, I think, four songs, three scenes, six dances, and I think I had, you know, three auditions. But the the funny thing about it is that the way I sang Mr. Monotony for my audition is basically how I ended up doing it in the show. <laughs> 
I believe it. You're a song stylist, man. I mean, just so you know, Debbie was in an unknown. She'd already done Broadway shows, but this was like your legitimate leading lady kind of big break. Yes. <laughs> Debbie, why were you in LA and not New York? Yeah, the hell. Um, because I was living there at the time. I'm born and raised there. Oh. And um, after I got married, we moved to LA for a couple of years. And when you're having all these callbacks, is Jerry Robbins behind the desk saying, now try it this way? Was he actually giving you any notes at these auditions or just you're just doing your thing? He just wanted to hear, I think we all, there was a lot of similar material, I'm sure. And he kept, I mean, Jerry, I mean, this is going further down the rabbit hole, but basically Jerry Robbins was casting the show until the day we opened. <laughs> so he just was constantly trying to figure out what little box you specifically were going to fit into. So yes. I don't really remember a lot of notes as opposed to just keep doing it. And then he would decide where you slotted. All right, Suzanne Fletcher, what was your dance yes. audition like? How the hell difficult was it? Well, I, you know, I have, it's, I have a little uh, precursor to that. It's like <laughs> when I saw it in backstage, because that's how long ago this was, that, that <laughs> this was going to happen. Well, the moment I saw what shows they were going to take from, I was like, I'm supposed to do this show. I knew I was supposed to do this show because when I was, the first show I ever saw when I was eight was a bad community theater production of, of, of Gypsy. And I did, I didn't care about Dainty June or Dip Gypsy or anything. I wanted to be, I fell in love with those gimmick girls at eight years old. And I used <laughs> to run around my dance studio going, and oh, and oh, and oh, 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 at eight, right? So by the time it got time for like the audition, I was like, I've been rehearsing for this since I was eight. I'm supposed to do this show and I'm supposed to be one of those gimmick girls, but um, I couldn't get seen. Uh, uh, um, submitted so I, I went to the I went over to equity I signed the board I went to the dancer call and I thought maybe they'll figure out that I'm like you know look I was a good dancer but I was I was like one click down from the fabulous dancers I was a semi fabulous dancer so um so I thought you know maybe they'll pull me out or something so I did the first combination and uh and this this audition it was the only audition I ever had where we, we had a lunch break. I mean, we went in at 10 and we auditioned wow. until six and we had a lunch break, you know? I've never had that happen, yet. but um, so so we went to our lunch break and they said, ah, 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 ah Suzanne, um, we want to teach you some songs and, and have Mr. Robbins, you know, see you. So while everybody else was eating lunch, I learned Mr. Monotony, I don't know why. Um, and I think I learned it was either gold, it was either sunrise, sunset, or gimmick, or something. So, so then Jerry comes in, during, you know, and I'm like now having a private audition with Jerry. And so uh, then they worked on me with some stuff while everybody else was dancing their butts off in the other room. And I'm like, thank you, goddess. And then finally, <laughs> they took me back in for like the last, um, the last um, combination of the day. So, so I got to miss out on a lot of the dancing and, and, uh, I, you know, that, that didn't bother me that much because I really w was trying to track in as like a character woman that dances. So, so that, that was mine. And then a lot of callbacks and then yeah. months where they said, well, Jerry really likes you, but we can't offer contracts right now because they haven't g finished doing all that they were doing with all the different creative people and getting the contracts together. So, so that, that was my audition. And then I missed the first two weeks of, of rehearsal because I booked this film called blood sucking pharaohs in pittsburgh but i was the lead <laughs> and so i we ended up shooting late but we ran over and so i thought that's the end of robbins and uh they called uh robbins and, and he said well that happens with film just tell her to get here when she gets here wow wow well you were lucky but at the same time the fact that you guys had a six epping month rehearsal period would allow you to miss the right. first two weeks <laughs> so drop in i the know box. right <laughs> and just in case people don't know, Suzanne did play the sort of dancer slash character track. She was gold in Fiddler, and she did get to be a stripper along with Faith and along with Debbie. Here's a two-second little clip of these three clowns. <laughs> <laughs> yes, queens. <laughs> yeah, work it. Uh -uh. Still got it. 
So Joanne Hunter, how did you come in? You were definitely a dancer dancer. I was a dancer dancer. I, like Suzanne said, I, if I recall, they were doing four days of cattle call. It was like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I went in the first day. I had just come off the road with a national tour of cats. And uh, I, I went in and exactly, we did 10 to 2 we took, and we learned we, we learned everything. And, and Jerry was there uh, along with uh, the, our five dance cats. I think we had, right, you guys? Five? Five. Jer Jerry, Cynthia, George, Victor. Oh, four. Okay. <laughs> and, anyway, and then, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then lunch break. And then three o'clock, we came back. And I remember coming back. And by this point, there were maybe, maybe 10 ladies left in the room. And wow. I was, at, we were at 890 Studios and I was, uh, I was stretching at the bar and they were all, it was a long table with Jerry and, and the entire, his whole crew. And they, Nelson and I hear, Joanne, and I, you know, I had my leg on the bar stretching and uh, I turn around and I was like, and he said, do you care? And I walk over and he's looking at my, I think he's looking at my resume. I'm assuming it is. And, and then he said, so who did you do West Side Story with? And now West Side Story, the tour, was my first professional job. Jerry came in for the last three weeks of rehearsal and tech uh, and opening. So he, he says, who, do you, who did you do West Side Story with? And I looked at him and I went, you? <laughs> but I didn't mean it. I, didn't, I wasn't trying to be staff. You know what I mean? I, I was like, um you and, he, and, he, and everyone looked at him and I said well you came in at the end remember and then you you then you did the technical rehearsal I was like my first show and then we opened the show and he he actually chuckled everyone laughed I was like oh my fuck oh, that's it I just blew it and then he was okay great thank you and then I danced the rest of the day I uh I got out at six o'clock like Suzanne said we were all day long and back in those there were I didn't have I did have a uh, what's it called an answering machine at home I called my agent at the time, or manager of, and I said, "All right, I just got out. I think it was okay. I got, you know, I, I lasted the whole day. Then I checked my machine, and who was who was one of our general managers? Not Le Le Leonard. It was a woman. I can't remember her name. Anyway, I got a I got a message uh, right after right after uh, those auditions. I was walking back to the subway on on Broadway, walking north uh, from 890." Check my answering machine, and it said, "Joanne, you, uh, we're, you've just, you got hired for Jerome Robbins Broadway. You are then the head of. Then I don't think it was called the Robbins Project or something. Right. Then it what, didn't have that title yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, she said to me, if you get another job, call us immediately. But hold, you're, you've been hired. And I was, so that was my, that was my audition for one for day, Robbins. Debbie Shapiro." Four auditions, you clank, Joanne. <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing. Oh, I never clanked in my life. Uh, <laughs> I'm just talking talking about what you told me. Okay, Marianne Lamb, you were also a dancer, dancer. Yet I would say with the character character personality, how was your audition? Well, I think I think I was with Charlotte Dumbois. We were together. What happened was we opened a show called Carrie on Thursday and we closed on Sunday. And at 10 o'clock that next morning, we went into Jerome Robbins um, audition. Wow. Charlotte, you should come on with me. <laughs> and what was amazing is he's, he, he, he had been um, casting for about, I don't know, eight months or something. And, and what was amazing for my audition is that we, he, he came in and there was just, there was Joey McNeely was there. There was Scott Wise. Mm. Yes. There was Charlotte Me? and myself. And, and I, I think that was it. That was only, it was only us. And we, he came in and he talked to us and then he kind of talked about this combination. This is the craziest thing. And we kind of learned it. I remember Charlotte not doing the pirouettes and just going, turn and we kind of just marked the whole thing oh, and then he said okay thank you very much and and we were like we didn't get to dance we were like ah oh. and we were all like freaked out he left yeah and we all got hired <laughs> and, and and the craziest thing i have to say 
is I got told that I got the show and they're like, can you start pre-production in like a week or two? And, and I'm like, we did three months of pre-production, six months. He brought in a whole crew for three months to do the pre-production before yeah. we did the six months of rehearsal to yeah. the, what was it? Two months of, you know, oh my God. yeah, it, two months before we opened. So it was over a year before we even opened the show. Have but you ever, that, that I was going to say, have you ever been in better shape in your life? <laughs> well, after doing Carrie with, you know, and washing the pig blood the night before off our bodies, <laughs> I, I was in amazing shape. I do have to say it was a, I tell, I teach now and I tell all my students, listen, dance full out. As soon as you hit the room, <laughs> don't mark a thing because you're auditioning. And, well, I, yeah. years, and I realized years later, um, Jerome, and this is Charlotte. And I talked about this just not very long ago and she'll tell you more, but Jerome Robbins sees, saw everything. He just went to every show off Broadway. So I realized yeah, yeah I realized. No, I, I re we realized in retrospect that he had seen Carrie, he had seen Song and Dance, which we were all in. Oh. Scott Wise, he knew who we were. He saw us, so he had already made up his mind. He wanted us. Oh. He, he's yeah. very much he sees, and he had seen Carrie, so that's why that happened. But um, also, I I ended up having to go into a separate room to do, which I know you did, Debbie too. Dreams come true. Um, an audition with that, which was like, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You know what I mean? I was, he was like running around with a little thing and being like, I don't know what we were doing, right? Silent movie character stuff. So I remember doing that with him and actually Cynthia on Rubia teaching it to me and then him just coming in and seeing me do it and then leaving. And then, and then I have to, I had to come back one more day to do Anita, to dance West, to dance um, America. Uh he had me come in privately and work with, with him on that. So that I had a little bit more auditioning, but I also went in and did uh, the pre-pro with Dreams Come True with him three weeks before the six months, before the six weeks of previews. Just saying. <laughs> Holy cow. All right, Faith Prince, should we think that maybe your Wi-Fi is working better? You probably look stunning. Never seen better color coordination, anything. What do we think? Is your Wi-Fi on? <laughs> I hope so. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I was going to say, I didn't know I was still cast when I was in the show because I had never worked with a dance company and they were behind me learning the song with me. And I finally asked to take a meeting with Jerome Robbins. And he said, yes, do you have a question? And it was like Dorothy going before Oz. You know, I thought it was just going to be in the office and they opened the doors and there he was in this big room at 890. And I was like, yes, sir. I just had a question. I said, am I cast in these parts or am I still auditioning? He said, you're cast. And I said, perhaps you haven't seen the young ladies behind the line. I said, they're really good. And they pick it up way faster. And he said, Faith. No. He said, that's why I hired you. <laughs> he said, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> and I was like, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> so, I mean, I think it's interesting to know for the people watching is that it was like a ballet so company funny. where you were performing in front and there was really your understudy basically full out behind you. But I have to say, Faith, your dancing is like great in this show. Did he work with you and Jason like a demon? Because you guys look amazing. He did. I mean, um, I, I like, I mean, these girls know I don't have extension and I can barely sit in second on the floor. I have no um, more like a vaudeville performer. I kind of pick up. OK, but um, they they worked. I mean, we we rehearsed for six months. Honey, you, you got to be good after six <laughs> months, you know, um, but he did work with. Us. Oh, my. He I did. want people, to, I want people to watch you. And, and he picked all the great. I'm, I'm, oh. I'll show you. The, I'll show the clips. Charlotte's back. This is Faith and Faith Prince and Jason Alexander. They're, the line is so great, and you literally you do these like um like not not pot of shot. What's it called? It's the the um the horse step. Um, Gabrielle. There's like three kicks to the front. Here, spot this amazing line. Here, here we go.
Holy cow. I just, so good. <laughs> okay. The, so, the, the, all these girls were very supportive to me because they knew I was the most non-dancer of anybody. And yet. All right. So, so just, by the way, just on a side note, I go back really far with all these women, but I go back the farthest with Suzanne Fletcher. Suzanne and I did, when I was a little boy, I did a production of Oliver where, I'll, let me see if you could find me. See if you see me here. Whoa. I'm in the top, um, what, what is that called? The top right, I guess? Yes. I'm smiling with, a, with Dorothy Hamill haircut. And Suzanne was a dancer in it, and she had this amazing split a la seconde where, <laughs> <laughs> where she would then be spun. She would hold that split, and they would spin her around like that. And so we've known each other since then. So when I saw you in Jerome Robbins, I was so proud of you. So, uh -huh. Suzanne, I know you did Whorehouse before, but what was it like? And Tommy Toon's brilliant too. What would you say the differences between Tommy Toon directing and Jerome Robbins directing? Because both of them I totally idolize. Well, they're, they're about as different as night and day, honestly. Because uh, uh, Tommy... I mean, I, I, you know, Tommy is very like kumbaya. You do the circle before the show. He's got like one toenail on the planet and the rest of him is just like drifting off, you know, and, uh, and um, Jerry's not, Jerry wasn't like that. <laughs> um, and, and Tommy, if he had something bad to say to you, he'd have somebody else say it to you, you know, so mm. that he never really says bad things to you. He'd have the dance captain or his associate or Tommy Walsh or somebody say it to you. Whereas, whereas Jerry Robbins, um, he, he kind of, you know, you knew, you knew, you knew what he was thinking. You knew, you knew how he was feeling. You didn't necessarily know how he's thinking because he was a horrible communicator. He really did not have a good grasp of words when he was displeased, but you definitely knew he was displeased. So you, there was that difference. Um, I don't know. For me, Jerry's the only person I've ever worked with that expected as much out of me as I expect out of myself. No, you know, and so, so I kind of understood him on a, on a different level. I never, I, Tommy, uh, Tommy hired me to my first show, and then I did also the tour of my one and only with him, and I'll be forever grateful. But I always felt like with Tommy that um, I I wasn't uh, hip enough or something. With Jerry, I just knew that that I understood I understood how his mind worked because mine works similarly. Only I'm I'm nicer, so I think maybe I'm not. <laughs> is it Debbie? Is this is this you with Suzanne? Yeah, there's there's a three of us. That was the, yeah, that was the LA opening. Uh, what a great photo. Hey, listen, I'm gonna send Debbie, I'm gonna send you right now. I have some donations. You have your phone there? I do. I'm gonna send you some donations to please read. And then we're gonna go to our medical break right after you read them, and then ladies will come back about five minutes later. You're emailing me, Seth. I'm gonna email because for some reason your email just came up easier. Okay, no. So, Check your email and um, hold on. I have one more. And feel free to continue donating at starsinthehouse.com or text fund 2020 to 56512 and then forward that receipt to donations at stars in the house. Debbie, go. Here we go. Are you ready? Because I'm done. This is donations first set. This is Rick from Minnesota donated a hundred dollars. Rick, thank you. You're amazing. Donald from North Carolina donated $25. We love you, Donald from North Carolina. Don't forget to vote. Happy to make this contribution in honor of all the good work and entertainment from Seth and James on Stars in the House. He knows what proper billing to give, clearly. From Sal from Oceanside, he gave $51. Specific. Yes. From Tom in Chicago, a hundred dollars in honor of Debbie. Oh, oh, oh thank you, Tom. <laughs> um, Carolyn from Washington gave two hundred and fifty-seven dollars. Carolyn, you're you're our hero. Sending a donation to help everyone get by until Broadway can open back up. We love you all for giving all that money. That is so fantastic. Thank you. 
Oh, you guys are so beloved, nice. man. You're, oh, you're, my God. Your show is beloved. So we're going to take a medical break. If you ladies have any sciatica questions, Ooh. you can raise your hand. But if not, take a two-second break. <laughs> and Dr. John LaPook is here. You'll be back. Okay, bye, 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 bye. Charlotta, you'll be back. <laughs> Here is Dr. John, well, CVS Chief Medical Correspondent and Sergeant House Chief Medical Correspondent, Dr. Dr. John, John LaPook. Hey, guys. Good evening. Hi, John. Hi, John. How you doing? I That's know you guys were texting about that new piece. Do you want to talk about it, James? Well, or, uh, we can. Well, John, do you want to set up the, the I love the new the news, the piece that you sent us, but do you want to set it up or do you have any other yeah, updates? Yeah. Well, you know, there's been a huge controversy, huge controversy over how this SARS-CoV-2 virus, the virus that causes COVID-19, spreads. And I'll just break it down really quickly without going down a rabbit hole. There are drops, you know, droplets, which um, are greater than 100 microns, which, which when somebody coughs or talks or just or speaks or sings, they will go out and they'll generally fall to the ground within six feet. But then there's a bunch, many more tiny little aerosols which go out when again when you sing and talk, um, and they go way past the six feet. So this goes down to how you protect yourself because right now the advice from some quarters have been, you know what, if you're indoors and you're you're uh, beyond six feet, then you don't need a mask because you only need a mask, you know, if you're not able to social distance. The aerosol scientists have been jumping up and down for months saying, no, that's that's not aerosol science. Aerosol science says it can go can float across a room. The question is, how infectious is it? We know that the schmutz, the tiny little particles and fluid can go across a room. Does it have virus that's viable? Is it alive? Can it infect you? If it does, what percentage of the, of the infections out there are caused by that? These are all questions. But we know that it happens because remember in Washington state, the choir practice where one person reportedly, it looks like they infected 52 other people. So that looked like it was way past the six feet. Right. Bottom line is that is a reason to wear a mask at all times indoors, even if you're beyond the six feet. And of course, it's a reason to open the windows, right. improve ventilation, do all the things that we were saying and why outdoors is a lot safer than indoors. So this is a setup to this piece right now. Right. Okay, let's watch it. As we've told you, COVID-19 numbers are on the rise in parts of the country. So what is that all about? Here's our Dr. John LaPook. Let's talk about face masks. In April, we learned that people with few or no symptoms could shed coronavirus and infect others. That meant we could no longer rely on the simple advice to stay home if you're sick. So health officials advise wearing face masks to prevent people with COVID-19 from spreading it to others. But many have chosen not to wear masks for a variety of reasons, including people not realizing, or not caring that they might get infected and be fine, but they could spread the virus to somebody else who could die. And wearing a mask became entwined with politics, rejected by many as an infringement on their rights. Here's the science that explains why wearing a mask is so important. When we cough or sneeze, larger airborne droplets containing virus can travel, usually up to about six feet. But we now know that smaller particles can be emitted simply by talking or singing and can go much farther and linger in the air for hours. The Centers for Disease Control says respiratory spread of coronavirus between people occurs mainly within six feet. We don't know yet how much of the spread of COVID-19 is due to virus traveling in the air greater than six feet, but it could help explain events like the choir practice in Washington state, where one person apparently infected 52 others inside a church. This video demonstrates how a cloth mask can significantly cut down the number of droplets emitted when someone speaks. Wow. Isn't that impressive? Papaya, that type of pa, pa, right? That sound, wham. And to see it with that laser technology, it's like, wow. And by the way, you don't have to be going papaya. You can just be talking. Now, right. why are bars so dangerous? By the way, that was Lee Cowan, and that was a CBS Sunday morning. He introduced me. That was a CBS Sunday morning piece. Um, the reason why bars are so dangerous, right, is that what happens in bars? It's really loud. So what do you do? Let me get a little closer to you, and let me talk a little bit louder, okay? If you had that laser light showing what was happening, you're now putting out more aerosols. You're right in somebody's face, and since you can have no symptoms and be shedding the virus, 
So, and then what happens when you drink, you get a little louder, people get a little bit more closer, a little more, less careful. So um, look, if, if you got nothing out of this little spiel right now, remember that little cloth mask and what that did. Um, something's better than nothing. Uh, of course, the N95 is the best, but even just the two ply or three ply, uh, of course, a surgical mask, they're all doing something. They're protecting the, when, when you, when you put it on you and you're sick, it'll stop it to some extent from going out. And then the other way too, it'll stop it to some extent from coming in. Not perfect, but it's certainly bottom line here for me, for me personally, and you're going to see the CDC advice change again on this because remember they put new advice up, then it came down. It's going to go up again. World Health Organization is talking about this. What I'm telling my friends and families and loved ones and doing myself is indoors, if I'm in with somebody who's not in my pod or bubble, I am wearing a mask and they should be wearing a mask. I think that's the safest thing right now. I'll just say, speaking of Jerome Robbins, not since the Sharks and the Jets spotted it out. Amanda says, he's not your doctor, CBS. He's our doctor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the snapping, the whistling—you still got it. That wasn't a very good whistle, was it? I just sort of yeah. just yeah. work on it. I, I knew what you were singing. Try oh, the trying. Anyway, oh, here we go. You got your accompaniment. Right. Peace out. Thank you. Bye, guys, <laughs> Bye. 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 Adorable. <laughs> Let me bring back on the dancers, dancer singers, dancer singer actresses. That's right. Please welcome Ms. Debbie Shapiro, Debbie Shapiro Gravit, and Debbie Gravit all in one. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Ms. Joanne Hunter, Ms. Suzanne Fletcher, and Suzanne Fletcher Smith. Ms. Marianne Lamb. Ms. Faith Prince looking good but sounding terrible. Charlotte Amboise. Uh, and she's gone. It's okay. quote unquote all good. However, <laughs> wait, and she, <laughs> she's she's by the way, I keep I keep saying that Marianne's a character actress because she is she's so funny. I have this two second clip, but just so you could see Marianne's comedy, um. right? Here you are, Marianne. I'm talking about what a great character actress you are. Here's your two seconds of comedy, which I just love. <laughs> you still got it. So, Debbie Shapiro, talk about Mr. Monotony, which you sang with sassy dancers behind you, what was, how did you decide how to stage yourself in that number? Were you like, I'm gonna add a ponche? Like, what did you decide to do? Oh yeah, I was ponching, not. Okay, let's just get something straight. Nobody was dancing behind me, okay? I she was gonna say that. By myself. Yeah, I don't remember that. Wait a minute, I remember some amazing ballet. I only saw it once. I, I remember, okay, this is a chance for me to tell my story here. Okay, go. Because I saw you, Debbie. I didn't see. I had. I didn't come to New York until 1998, but I was living in Los Angeles, and I saw oh. Jerome Robbins Broadway at the Schubert Theater. Really? It was the third to last day because I think you closed on a Saturday. I remember this. Closed on a Saturday. I saw it the Thursday before you closed at the Schubert. Saw so it with a good friend of mine in the front row center, and it was so amazing. I like bought a ticket. I think by myself to come on Saturday matinee and Saturday night. And I think I was able to get a single ticket front row. I met you and Scott. I never do this except for Cheetah Rivera. I've done this where I'd go backstage and like bought flowers or something for you. And I came backstage and I talked to you and I talked. I think you might have been going and Scott was there. I think he had injured himself or something. And so he was backstage. And you, both of you could not have been sweeter, nicer, kinder. Of course, I ran that cassette tape to the ground, got like a bootleg VHS tape of whatever I could of Jerome Robbins Broadway to see all of you. And that's how that's how important this show was to me, a non-dancer, because you all made it look easy, even though it was difficult. And um, it was just it was just really entrancing. And I just I love all of you. And it was it was just a wonderful experience for me. Wow. Well, no wonder you and Seth are together. <laughs> We have good taste. <laughs> so I'm about to say because I don't remember Debbie yeah. having anyone. Wasn't there like her. a monotony ballet where like one person yeah, represented the trombone? As soon as the song ended, ish, the dancers came on. So I sort of told the story, and then they danced to the story. I, I see. Okay, so my I conflated it, as Brian Williams says. I get it. Okay, so <laughs> so talk about your talk about your staging. How did you how did you decide what to do? I just, I mean, the song is literally about a monotonous, I mean, it's a, it's a story. And 
I used to, you know, this was the eighties kids. So I had a, um, oh my God, Norma Kamali. I had a Norma Kamali sweatshirt with these huge shoulder pads that I would wear because it made me look like, you know, really skinny in the middle. <laughs> We had big shoulder pads, which is why I love football players. And I, so I wore this sweatshirt and I, I just, I would just sort of lean a little bit and then I would lean a little, I mean, you know, and I finally, you know, we were moving forward and we were probably in our, you know, fifth month of rehearsals or something. I finally went to Jerry and I said, Jerry, what? when are you going to stage my song? And he said, I'm not staging your song. This is it. What Do exactly what you're doing. And they took my sweatshirt I wore and they had me bring it to my costume fitting. And so basically I'm wearing my sweatshirt long in the, in the gown that I wore. <laughs> Wait, so it, was your, it was your rehearsal. You literally took your rehearsal staging and your rehearsal outfit <laughs> and made it into a Broadway show? <laughs> That's right. I'm here to tell you. Yes. Okay. I'm going to play a little clip of it. I'm also obsessed with your placement because I'm like, you're belting, then you're almost head voice, but then it's a mix and it's a belt. Like it's just phenomenal placement wherever. And it's so in the center of the pitch, man. Let's take a gander at this. So good. Yes, you sound amazing, hence the Tony Award. Okay, so which of you three clowns wants to talk about the Charleston? <laughs> Joanne Hunter? Well, I'm very, we can chime in together. Yeah. Um, uh, because originally when we were rehearsing, correct me if I'm wrong, Marianne, about this, it, we were not the original three. It was Barbara Yeager was always the one of the originals, and it was Mary Ellen Stewart. And who was the third girl, Mary Ellen? Oh, the blonde. Who? The blonde. Um, Louise Hickey. Yes. Louise Hickey. Yes. Louise Hickey. Okay, so yeah. it was that's that's who it was, that's and good. and exactly what you were saying, James, about it was like a ballet, a, a come or who was saying that about it, like. People are behind you, you know, doing the steps. We weren't doing the steps, but we had to know them. So I remember sitting, being up at the bar, kind of we're hanging out, and he is Jerry is getting flustered and and angrier uh, 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 by the minutes rehearsing <laughs> the three women, and you just you don't you don't say anything, and all of a sudden, next thing I know, I don't I think it was was I first, and then you, Mary. All I know is I took Mary Ellen Stewart's place, and he it's said, first. Mary Ellen, out, and he goes, Joanne come and you you come down you're like she was gone i led the line out and and the countdown you got to come out was and and yeah not much success hold on hold and, on hold on and, wait one thing yeah. so you're saying joanne you would not you would not learn the combination you just basically were expected to know everything you were watching in rehearsal in case he yeah. was like hey you're on you weren't like okay how does it go just go. No, <laughs> you, literally, just go. Exactly, Seth. I mean, you had you had to you had to take the responsibility to learn it. So when they were yeah. teaching it, you were like in the corner because you didn't want it. You didn't want to get in the way. You didn't want to, you know, a, a, be an obstruction of any kind. You had to learn it, and then you're just sitting there watching, and then you hear your name, and then yeah. you hear she's out. And it literally was and dun, 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 dun. that's all. That's all Paul Giamatti got too. And. Still conducting, uh, and then and then it happened, I guess, to Louise with you, Marianne. Is that right? All what I remember, Joanne, 
is him getting mad and he's like, Joanne. And I'm thinking, oh, I feel so bad for Joanne Hunter. I'm like, oh, that poor thing. And then he's like, Lamb, get over here. And I'm like, oh, shit. I mean, I wish you could it was me. But I remember feeling so bad for Joanne Hunter. <laughs> It was like it was so nervous. Your heart's like this. Oh, yeah. like, oh shit! And now you feel you feel horrible for your 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 um company member mates, right? You feel horrible, that, and then but you can't. There's no time to go. Oh, I'm so sorry. All there's time is to prep. There's to prep. You're too scared to and and you got to go. It was it was nerve nerve wreck. You had to be on point every moment in rehearsal. Every moment. Yeah, My favorite Charleston story is the fabulous <laughs> costumes that you and I got. Uh, we got hand painted the most stunning costumes <laughs> you have ever seen for Charleston. And like every I mean, sheriff, our I mean, sheriff, yes. hand painted to our hats, to our pearls. We look uh, like. I Never had costumes like that, and we came on. We that look, stage. we look sensational. Uh, no, we, we didn't hit the stage, Marion. It was in rehearsal. We did a, we did a, eight, um, a costume parade. It was a costume oh. parade in the studio. We came down. I was feeling like oh, I was it. I made it, and okay. he looked. At, we had to do the dance once, and he cut the costumes because the like, costumes stop, outshone stop. the choreography. It, it was yes, I was sharing. He started yelling. We didn't finish it. He it was right. He, he stopped us right after our the first salt trio we had. And he it was started like, yelling, "Stop! Stop! No. Get those clothes off those girls!" And we were literally like, uh. "All of yeah. us, all of us." Because I, the timid girl, I had this beautiful. If all of my mine was all hand painted too, yeah. and it was like. It was Irene Sheriff had designed these costumes. Dead. Irene oh. Sheriff, she had won a she bazillion Oscars. Didn't she, she do five, Funny Girl? She was yes. five thousand years old, and she had her hair back in a bun like this, and a cigarette <laughs> and a cigarette holder, and she's standing there, and Jerry is just like grinding her into the dust, and he's literally taking a pair of scissors and he cut Elaine's like fur coat down, the 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 collegiate's fur oh, coats down, and right. and. And then, and I, and I, she was just trying to like salvage her dignity, you know. And then he's like, he, she had me in these little Mary Jane shoes, and he's got, what are these shoes? And and she looked at me and she said, she said she had to have flat shoes, and I'm like, no, no. I said I, I had to have heels because I'd had Achilles tendonitis. I couldn't dance in flats. And oh, it was just awful. It was an awful moment. It was it was a bloodbath. Wait, so no matter what, an understudy was always waiting to go on either an understudy dancer or an understudy costume designer. Exactly. It's terrifying. <laughs> well, the, but the thing is, is all those geniuses that worked with him, they all love, they all respected him so much and they all wanted his approval so much. It was so interesting to see these icons, these giants of the business that cared so much what he thought, but he also cared so much what they thought. I mean, it, it really was a, a, a mutual thing, but it was it was astounding to witness over and over and over again. You know, <laughs> especially I know. When, Art, yes, Charlotte. I have I have two things to say. First of all, I I remember that also, but I also remember us all in we were at the theater teching, and we all had to sh parade every costume. Yes. Every he changed, redid most of all the costumes. So yeah. the amount of money, I, and and I do have to say this, he was right on spot mm -hmm. with yeah. every choice. You thought you had the best costume, and and you realized afterwards actually he was right. He was completely right. But I have this quick funny story because you were saying how everyone idolized him. They all idolized him, but really kind of hated him. Yeah, and I, I still remember being in tech at the theater, and it was all dark. And I'm sitting, you know, in you know one of the aisles, kind of or laying on the floor, stretching on down the aisle, and it's dark. And Manny Eisenberg, the producer, he comes up to me, sneaks up to me. Now, mind you, we've done six months of rehearsal, never met the guy, never met him. He sneaks up to me. He goes, "Hi, hi, I, I'm Manny Eisenberg. I'm one of the producers of the show, and I just want to tell you, I haven't been around because I hate him. I just hate him, but I just wanted to say hi." And then he, I was like, oh my god! I was like, okay, there's Manny Eisenberg. Yeah, he was like, I stand the guy. So I'm just sneaking in to say hi to you, you know, and I'm leaving. That was it. Well, I want to. Well, actually, since you're talking about Jerry right now and him being hated, I, I do have to say, say 
Yeah, yeah, Marianne. You can't hear me. No, go ahead, Marianne. No, can we can hear you. Go. Marianne. Marianne. Right. Is it away? He was. Yeah. Well, her, her Wi Fi's out. Charlotte, I found this clip of him <laughs> coaching you. It's interesting because obviously there's so much respect, oh, yeah. and I love the tiniest movement. He's oh. basically showing you how to push this guy away and the way he's physicalizing it. There's so much subtext to it. I just, I yeah. love watching you take his note. Take a gander. I love that. It's so specific. It's so specific. Can I just say something? Jerry Robbins was the best Anita, Peter Pan, Riff, Bernardo. Uh, Baby Beauty. Baby Beauty. He was an unbelievable actor and performer. And that's why verbally he couldn't always tell us what he wanted. Mm. But physically he could absolutely show us. And it was brilliant, brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Joy, have, oh, yeah, go, ahead. To go ahead, Marianne. Tell a quick story, just very quick about the costumes, because we did. We actually went up to purchase and performed the entire. Oh, I think you muted. Hold on. And we just wore black. Can you guys hear me? Maybe I'm yeah. not. Yeah. But it went okay. mute. It went mute and, for a minute. But go ahead. Okay. Yeah, and we wore just simple black leotards. Everyone wore black. And um, that night, I guess he told Grover Dale that he wishes that he could have done the show just in black leotards. But it was too late because they have spent so much money on the costumes. But the show worked beautifully in black. Right, because then you really see all the dancing and the acting and there's no distraction. Now, who played that moment where a boy's flirting and she keeps pushing him away. Was that you, Suzanne, where it's like, oh, don't. Yes, that yes. it's a timid girl in the Charleston. Uh, and uh, actually that was originally, originally Nancy Hess was supposed to do that. And um, and she, uh, we, they had a, a little film, uh, a little clip of, of, the Char of the original. I don't know where it came from. And up until then, I hadn't been that interested in the Charleston. I, I mean, they just started rehearsing it. But then I saw this clip and the timid girl, you know, and she's like, starts out very timid and good time. Charlie's trying to talk her into going into the speakeasy. And she's like, no, 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 no. And then she gets pulled in and then time passes and people do shit. And then all of a sudden the music starts going, bump, 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 bump. And she comes spilling out, bump, 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 with big horns. She comes spilling out, the guys come spilling out. She comes spilling out, she's like, like all disheveled, she looks at herself, she shakes all of her stuff and screams at the top of her lungs and launches into this wild ass Charleston. And the moment I saw that little clip of that, I was like, I'm supposed to do that. You know, it's like, because you have to be able to be willing to dance with abandonment. And it takes a, a lot, it's hard to dance with abandonment because you have to be willing to not look that great when you're doing it. And Nancy was so ballet trained. I don't think Nancy could look not great if she tried. You know, she just is a beautiful dancer, a funny as hell and could do all those character roles. But this one, I was like, I just know I'm supposed to do that. So then the next day, like uh, we were sitting around getting ready to do something and Jerry, I said, Jerry doesn't know how good a dancer I am because he never put me in any of the dance stuff. So. So the next day I made sure that he could see me warming up with my legs straight out and head over here. You know, <laughs> I, I really, I kind of did a little tiny campaign for myself so that he knew I could dance, really dance. And so he said, learn the timid girl. I said, oh, 
okay, you know, <laughs> and um, and then I ended up doing it. So that was, and actually that number is my, I think is one of the most beautifully choreographed number. It certainly is the most beautifully choreographed number that I've ever done. I, I mean, so well constructed and the storytelling is so strong and the, the music and everything about it. I loved doing that number. Suzanne, wait a minute. You you said watching clips. This is before YouTube. What do you mean by that? Watching a clip? They had some little like some little film of it that somebody of like had the original. Mm -hmm. Just was a that, little tiny bit of it. Was that true of other numbers in the show? Because I didn't know that. Some of them. Some yes. Some, some, them, no. some no. Like from I, that same show. Was it? No. That's dreams come true. Was from that same show, and they didn't have any footage of that. Was it simply a matter of if the footage was available, then they would show it, and if it wasn't, it wasn't? Is that? Yeah, wow. Or what he wanted to see, just to remember what he yeah, grabbed. Was it his way of making sure it was precisely what had been done yeah. in the original production? Is that why? Which he may have changed, too, but he wanted to see what it was, and then he would play with it if he wanted to or not. But I mean... He he was so interested. He would like literally like from the from the Broadway company, which we did for a year and a half, to the tour. He changed in the timid girl when Good Time Charlie is trying to grab her, and she's like, da -da 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 -da, I don't want to go with you." Right? It went right, left, right, left. We got on the tour, and he changed it to left, right, left, right. <laughs> Because he knew I had such muscle memory about that thing. He wanted me to be in my body. I could have killed him. <laughs> but that's the, you know, that's how he was, you know? It's like, no, 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 no. Go left, right, left, right. It's like, okay, so after six months of rehearsals and seven weeks of previews and opening and a year and a half on Broadway, now I'm going to have to change this. Okay, great. Thank you, <laughs> But you know, he did a lot of other numbers that got cut, though, that didn't even make it to the show. You know, he would be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mentioned the, the Charleston. Sleep, like, remember that sleep ballet? Oh, sorry. Sorry. sorry, sorry. sorry. Like I mentioned the Charleston. I should at least show it. Think again, everybody. Hey. Hey Charlotte, did you ever have did you have to perform Anita in front of Cheetah Rivera? During the Kennedy Center Honors. What? On the Kennedy Center Honors. That's right. Well, she asked me to do that. That's right. Um, well, was she ever was she ever at rehearsal at all? I don't think she was, actually. I don't think she was one of the people that came to rehearsal. No. Well, she but, had a town. Peter Gennaro did. Peter Gennaro, the original choreographer, yeah. did. And he worked with me. He worked with me. Wow. Which was okay, great. I have, to, I have to discuss your Back bend into the craziest high spot mon I've ever seen. Here we go. Okay, before before you clowns go, Debbie, I beg Debbie Shapiro Gravit to give me some actual songstressness. Girl, you got to close out the night with that full central Bell. pitch. Oh, you want something? We want something, lady. Give us what you got. All right, here we go. Uh oh. Chicks and ducks and geese let us go <laughs> out in the Surrey. When I take you out in the Surrey with the friends on top, watch that fringe and see how it flutters. When I drive them high step and strutters. 
Nosy pokes will peek through the shutters and their eyes will pop. The wheels are yellow, the upholstery is brown. Dashboard's genuine lover. With eyes glass curtains, you can roll right down. Case there's a change in the weather. Two bright side lights winking and blinking. Ain't no final rig, I'm a thinking. You can keep your rig if you're thinking of a kid too small for that shiny little surrey with the fringe on the top. Okay, girls, let's all scat. Look, you're all staring at me with that look. I can see the stars getting blurry when we drive back home in the Surrey. When we drive back home in the Surrey with the fringe on top. I can feel the day getting colder, feel a sleepy head on my shoulder. Not improving close to my shoulder till it falls. Come on. The sun is setting on the rim of a hill. The moon is making a head up. And just when I'm thinking all the earth is still, a lock will wake up in the bed. Hush, you bird, my baby sleeping. Maybe got a dream worth to keep it. Whoa, you team, and just keep a creeping at a slow clip clop. For that shiny little surrey with the fringe. Shiny little surrey with the fringe. Shiny little surrey with the fringe. Still got it, Dev Shapiro. Grab it. And I guess um, since we're all performing, I just want to tell all you ladies, you're all amazing dancers. I don't know if you know, but I myself, back in the '80s, um, I studied I studied jazz. Um, I was especially obsessed with um, the certain step where I would I don't know if you remember in the '80s where we would pull back. It wasn't full of layout, but pull back like that uh, because you looked forward, you looked to the side, and I thought I would share with you to close out the show uh, my amazing '80s jazz dancing. This is um, me at 17 years old, quote unquote, still got it. Now that's Pam Kaplan on the left. Now someone on the right is about to do an amazing layout. Seth Radetzky. Now, do you see the leg warmers? White Capizio shoes. Now most amazing step in the world, down to the side, up and pull back. Work! <laughs> <laughs> I I didn't I didn't even get a call back, which is not cool. Um, anywho, I went to 891 Broadway. That was probably the <laughs> that was probably the issue. <laughs> it's one building over. Um, <laughs> anywho, so guys, that was amazing. You're also talented. You were part of theater history. Brava! Thank you for being here. And Jimmy. poor Faith Prince with her Wi-Fi. She tried. Oh my I gosh! Texted me that, oh, she did. Yeah, she said I tried so hard. So Brava, Faith. I know. Um, we love you, Faith. Thank you, ladies. You're amazing. I'll play you guys. Thank you, guys. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Love y'all all. Let's love do you. a private thing sometime. Love you. Yeah. Miss you all. <laughs> love you. Bye. You ready, Seth? Debbie, you, Deb, you sound fabulous. Oh, you. Debbie, yes, you sound amazing. Wait, Debbie's never not sounded fabulous. I know. She played oh, the whole thing. I you should play so happy birthday fun. for me on the horn. That was fun. Love y'all. I love that we're still on. I, I love know. the exit. But you can <laughs> <understand>. <laughs> we will be talking. Where's the exit grade, music? You know? The exit music is Debbie playing the trumpet. Debbie, play that trumpet. Oh. <laughs> Here we go for everybody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the <laughs> reason. Oh my God! Oh my heaven! <laughs> <laughs>
Oh my god, that was so